Have you ever wanted to add a progress bar to your Jupyter Notebook when you're training your machine learning model? If you answered yes, then you want to watch this video till the end because I'm going to be showing you that. And without further ado, we're starting right now. So the first thing that you want to do is fire up this Jupyter Notebook. And I'm going to be showing you how this works inside the Google Colab. All right, and so let's get started. Okay, so the first cell that we want to run here is going to be importing the necessary library needed today. And so we're going to be importing the tqdm function from the tqdm.notebook. And so the progress bar is made possible from the tqdm library. And in order to slow down each iteration, we're going to make use of the sleep function from the time library. And so let's run that. So it's starting up the notebook, initializing. One moment. Okay, it's connected. Okay, and so here we're going to be defining a list containing a range of value from 0 to 99. So it will be 100 members in this list of number. And then we're going to be running a for loop, iterating through each of the member in the 100 member list. And then for each iteration, we're going to have a pause of about 0 0.05. And then upon completion, we could also allow it to print completed. So let's start without printing completed and let's continue also commenting out this and then run it with the print. All right, let's start. So you're going to see the progress bar here. And you're seeing that it moves from 0% until 100%. Let's redo it but then printing it upon completion. So upon completing this progress bar, it will print completed. There you go, completed. So this will come in handy when you're performing iteration and for each iteration, it will keep you updated on the progress of your calculation. And so this will come in handy particularly for those of you who are running big calculation task and you're afraid that it might hang or it might pause. And so for your own peace of mind, you'll be able to see the progress of your calculation. And so let's redo that, but then plugging it in, in the model building process. And so here we're going to make use of the Delani solubility data set. And so we're going to import the data set as a data set variable, and then we're going to separate it into the X and Y variables in order to prepare it for the model building. Let's run that. And so you could replace this with your own data set of choice. All right, and so this is the code that will essentially allow you to build the model and then it will iterate through the various number of estimator starting from 100 until 1000. So each iteration, it will iterate through each of the numbers here. So the end estimator will be changed initially starting from 100. And then with each iteration, it will change to become 200. And then the next iteration, it will become 300 and etc. At each of the iteration, the end estimator will change and then the model will be built. And then we're going to apply the model to make a prediction on the entire data set. And so you could feel free to change this to some other data split of your choice. Perhaps you want to use it for your training set, maybe your 80% split subset of the data. And then we're going to compute the R square value by applying it on the predicted value and the actual value. And then we're going to compute the mean squared error using the mean squared error function from the sklearn metrics library. And then finally, we're going to be printing out the number of tree or the n estimator, which is the parameter that we're running at each iteration, the corresponding R squared value, and also the corresponding mean squared error value. And so let's run that. And here you have it. At each iteration, you will see the number of tree along with the corresponding R squared and the MSE value. All right, and there you have it, the model building with the progress bar.
Okay, so let me know in the comments how you're intending to use the progress bar for your machine learning projects. And so I'm looking forward to reading all of your comments. And if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet done so, hit on the notification button in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.